This is a scene captured by a netizen inside the kitchen of a takeout restaurant. Seen such sanitary conditions, do you still think that takeout you ordered smells delicious? Recently, inside a restaurant in Guangzhou, someone caught staff members using a cooking pot to clean a broom, which was then used to clean the walls. The owner claimed that the staff did it for convenience and promised to instruct them not to do so in the future. In Shenzhen, a netizen observed the owner of a popular takeout store behind his apartment during retrieving gutter oil from the store's drainage. It's unknown if it's to facilitate these gutter oil collectors, but now there are even inventions like gutter oil separators. Here's a new invention in relation to gutter oil: an oil water separator. You just pour leftover hot pot and other leftovers into this machine, and it separates out the oil. Should we call this gutter oil or chopstick oil? I heard this machine is selling like hotcakes on the e-commerce platform Taobao. I wonder if these shady restaurant owners are snapping them up. And what about the inventor's original intention? Was it really just to make collecting gutter oil easier? This chef said he does not dare to eat the sauerkraut fish they serve at their restaurant. I wouldn't dare eat the sauerkraut fish we serve at our restaurant. Normally, sauerkraut fish is made by freshly killing a fish from the tank, slicing it, and cooking it with bone broth. But that's costly and labor-intensive. Then our kitchen staff came up with a shortcut. Just add tap water to concentrated fish paste to turn water into thick soup. And to boost the flavor and color, add some golden soup paste and fish essence, a little seasoning, and voila, this fragrance is unbeatable. Finally, dunk bagged fish slices soaked in a water holding agent into the soup, and it's ready to serve. Sprinkle some seasoning, pour hot oil over it, and there you go. This high tech fish dish will make your whole family happy. This is a street vendor selling hand grabbed pancakes. The vendor was seen washing a cloth in a puddle on the ground, then using it to wipe down his work table. In a video, a worker is seen putting live wiggling fish into a grinder. Quickly turning them into mints. The issue: this fish weren't gutted before being ground. They might end up as fish balls in the market. It's terrifying. There are such long worms in this egg, and not just one. A man ordered a snail noodle dish for takeout and unexpectedly found a screw head in it. Ham sausage is a popular food among children. Shanghui is one of China's most famous brands of ham sausage. A netizen discovered nauseating foreign objects in a ham sausage from this brand after cutting it open. A woman in Ankan, Shanxi, was disgusted to find a plastic bag over ten centimeters long in her ham sausage. This is the so-called silicon tofu. During its production. Thickeners like carrageen and gelatin, along with colorants, are added to make the tofu more elastic and to increase its volume. This significantly reduces its nutritional value. This is a small tea processing factory where workers use high-pressure spray machines to add fragrance to the tea leaves. It's said that this process gives the tea an enticing aroma and appealing appearance. A woman found a large foreign object in her juice. This is the Huiyuan juice we've been drinking all day. After finishing it, I felt something inside, so I cut the box open. It's not even past its expiry date. It was produced in June this year with a 12-month shelf life. But when I opened it, it was all black and disgusting inside. What on earth is this? Can the company have a look at it? If you knew that these rotten apples are the raw materials of for making juice, you wouldn't be surprised to find foreign objects in the juice. A netizen in Dazhou, Sichuan, bought some bananas that emitted a pungent smell. He was surprised the smell killed many flies and mosquitoes flying around it. People are questioning what these bananas have been through. Were they soaked in poison? Beijing roast duck, a traditional Chinese delicacy known for its crispy skin and tender meat. Is a favorite for many. Those who have tried it know that a portion cost over a hundred yuan. However, in many Chinese cities, street vendors sell roast duck for just twenty yuan, which is less than three U.S. dollars. Why is such a huge price difference for the same dish? A netizen revealed the secret behind these street sold roast ducks. Here comes the sizzling roast duck. Look at the neck, all bruised. Just soak it in hydrogen peroxide overnight, and the bruises come out. 
to clean the leftovers, pick out the badly damaged parts, and that's basically step one of preparing the raw material for a 20 yuan street roast duck. Can you believe people eat these ducks, especially the cheap ones, for around 20 yuan? A normal duck takes five to six months to raise, but these are fast grown in just a month, costing less than 10 yuan each. They never see the sun or swim. Their main feature is fast meat growth. To prevent illness, they're fed lots of antibiotics, leading to severe antibiotic residue. Excessive human intake can damage white blood cells and even harm the liver and kidneys. To improve the roast duck's taste and appearance, various additives are used. It ends up crispy, tender and tempting, but it's horrifying if you think about it. Chicken feet, considered unpalatable by many Westerners, are a delicacy in China. Known for their chewiness and rich in collagen, calcium and other essential vitamins and minerals, chicken feet are popular in China. This has led Chinese businesses to import large quantities of chicken feet from countries like the USA and Brazil. However, some unscrupulous businesses aiming to cut costs even import frozen chicken feet that are over two or three years old and of very low quality. These chicken feet are then sold at extremely low prices to small workshops producing ready-to-eat chicken feet snacks. Let's take a look at how these inferior chicken feet are turned into bags of tasty snacks in these shady workshops. First, they bleach those low-quality chicken feet using two methods. Industrial hydrogen peroxide or industrial formaldehyde, commonly known as formalin solution, mixed with Corsic soda. After such treatment, the chicken feet look white and plump, very appealing in appearance. Then various seasonings are added to these chicken feet along with some scientific and hard work to create various tasty snacks. Unfortunately, after such processing, the nutritional content of the chicken feet is almost completely lost and they become contaminated with industrial substances like hydrogen peroxide and formaldehyde. Consuming such chicken feed is harmful to health and offers no benefits. Law enforcement officers in Denyang City, Sichuan, discovered an underground food processing workshop. Ingredients commonly used in hot pot restaurants such as tripe and duck intestines were soaked in several dirty pools. It is said that these are industrial caustic soda solutions, which after soaking made the ingredients whiter and larger. It's horrifying. This is a cow shan beef hot pot restaurant. Leaving the beef out at night. Look, rats are feasting on it. Can we still eat this meat? Really? According to a revolution on Platform X on November 29th in Le Qing City, Zhejiang, in Qingyuan Road, a netizen passing by a hot pot restaurant was shocked to find a rat relishing a steak on a table. Following the video exposure, the establishment was reportedly shut down. Coincidentally, another netizen recently captured footage of three rats stealing food in the kitchen of a restaurant in Zhang Jiajie, Tianmen Mountain Scenic Area, while guests were dining in the hall. This particular rat was blazingly stealing prepared takeaway food. Netizen joked, these rats would not cause such a stir if they were made into duck necks. Others commented, I saw it, it's a little duck, not a rat. These comments stem from a previous incident reported as the rat head duck neck case. On June 1st, a student at Jiangxi Industrial Vocational Technical College found a rat head in his cafeteria meal, which local food authorities initially identified as a duck neck. This led to the coining of the new English word ruck. Under public pressure, the Jiangxi provincial government reopened the investigation, officially declaring on June 17th that the object was indeed a rat's head, not a duck neck. Such absurd occurrences highlighted the severity of China's food safety issues. Regrettably, university canteens in China seem not to have learned from this lesson, allowing the absurd to happen again. Recently, a netizen in Shanghai posted that a student in Shanghai, Jiao Tong University, found a 1.5 centimeter long needle in their meal. The student reported the incident to the university, demanding an explanation. On November 24th, the logistics support department of the university stated that the needle was not for human 
or experimental use, but for vaccinating pigs. This explanation did little to reassure students, sparking further concerns and heated online discussion. Netizens question how can such a large needle be missed by those washing, cutting or cooking the food? Isn't food safety always supposed to be the most important? On July 17th, a student at the Guangzhou Huashi Foreign Language Arts Vocational School in Zhen City found a rubber-like foreign object in a roast duck, suspected to be a condom. That night, school officials responded, claiming preliminary investigations indicated the object was a duck's eyeball membrane. The school retained the sample and explained the situation to parents and students. On the morning of July 19th, a report from Guangzhou Zhen Chen stated that experts were invited to a third-party testing laboratory to conduct morphological, infrared, and compositional tests confirming the object is a duck's eyeball membrane. The public was urged to trust official information and not to believe, create, or spread rumors in an effort to maintain a clean online environment. With the authorities' determination, the incident was resolved, leaving people to witness what seemed to be blatant lies from government departments, helpless to do anything about it. Netizens are skeptical about the claim that it was a duck's eyeball membrane. How is it possible a tertiary-level student is unable to identify the difference between a duck's eyeball membrane and a condom? It's only been half a month since the last incident where a rat was mistaken for a duck, and now... This is an even more absurd situation. It's really shocking. Some netizens are jokingly commenting, ducks are really having a tough year, aren't they? First, they mistook a rat's head for a duck neck, and now it's another story involving a duck. Poor ducks can't catch a break. Really, when there's a problem, just submit the mistake and fix it. Why is it so hard to own up? It's like they're just hoping to get lucky and sweep it under the rug. Honestly, just focusing on improving cafeteria hygiene will be a much better use of their energy. Did you know that in China, flour can also be fake? It has actually been a long-standing issue. Some flour mills reported add talc or calcium powder, which are cheaper than wheat flour, to whiten and bulk up their product. As per Chinese food standards, flour can contain up to 25% additives, meaning a quarter of the flour purchase may consist of such substances. This practice extends beyond four meals to noodle factories, where additional additives like talc powder are commonly added during the noodle making process. This widespread industry practice raises concerns about food safety and consumer health. Highlighting the prevalence of food additives, a woman in Guangzhou struggled to find buns or steamed buns without additives in a large supermarket. I can't believe it. I can't find a single bun or even a steamed bun in this huge supermarket that doesn't contain food additives. There are so many additives. I can't even understand them all. Even our favorite bun contains lots of additives. It's really frustrating. My son loves them, but we can't buy them anymore. They're all the same. The steam bun, look at the ingredient list, full of additives. Even in the wu wu to, this is even worse. Dozens of ingredients, the whole supermarket, and not a single bun without food additives. It's so sad. Recently, a video showing grapes being stomped by a farmer with bare feet went viral on the Chinese internet. This video showing heaps of raisins being processed in this manner sparked intense debate among netizens. Many expressed shock and disgust with comments like, I never wash raisins before eating them. And I've been soaking raisins in water to drink. Turns out it's foot wash water. This video, originally intended to showcase the quality production process of a Shichuan farmer's raisins, unintentionally captured the workers' feet stomping the raisins, raising public concerns about food hygiene. Despite the farmer's insistence that his raisins undergo a vigorous production process, including the use of high-pressure water guns, rapid drying, and UV sterilization to ensure hygienic standards, the response did not fully alleviate public concerns. Many people declared their aversion of consuming raisins in the future. The practice of using feet in food processing is not new. As seen in the traditional processing of tea leaves, a recent video showed tea farmers making tea guan ying tea where one steps involve rolling the tea leaves to break the cells and release the juices, enhancing the flavor. However, many netizens find the direct use of feet in this process unacceptable. 
Traditionally, tea farmers use their feet for the step, but this method has largely been abandoned with the advent of mechanization. However, some rural areas still retain this ancient practice, making it necessary to wash tea leaves before brewing. This video also shows workers processing a spice called chempi, where a woman is seen stepping on the product, albeit with shoes on. In the processing of pickled long beans, workers are also seen using their feet directly. Witnessing such a process might deter many from eating pickled long beans. The term mutual harm at the bottom has been used in recent years to describe a phenomenon where those struggling at the bottom of society, harboring resentment and feeling powerless against their fate, end up harming others in similar situations instead of offering support. In such a societal dynamic, everyone becomes both a victim and a perpetrator. Unfortunately, this mutual harm at the bottom phenomenon is prevalent in China. For instance, chefs don't eat the food they cook, bun shops owners don't eat their buns, and food factory workers don't consume products from their factories. These individuals often act selfishly without considering others. Some even harbor delusions of getting rich overnight and lacking moral scruples, resort to fraud and deceit. Unbeknownst to them, if everyone acted this way without effective regulation, society would descend into a chaotic and dangerous state, leading to harm for all, with no one spared. Mm -hmm.